proposed budget to the budget committee in October. The, the budget committee reviewed the information that was presented, we asked questions, and then we approved and adjusted the proposed lines as we felt was appropriate. And although our initial review was originally scheduled to be completed during one meeting, we ended up adding a second meeting to the schedule to allow for additional time, to allow us to really dig in and understand the number, ask questions. The town presented its warrant articles to the budget committee in December for review. And then the tax cap, uh, this town operates under a tax cap, so those calculations were considered by the budget committee when reviewing the proposed budget and the warrant articles. Our budget review was completed January 2nd, when the budget committee voted its recommendations for the warrant article and the operating budget. And now we will walk through the whole process. The decision criteria as we reviewed included uh, reviewing the rationale, listening to the rationale that was provided by the town administrator and the board of selectmen, department heads. Why are we asking for this money? And how much of it was actually spent over the last three years? So consider historical spending. And then we need to consider what is the reason the budget presents to the voters. There are obviously fixed cost increases in the revenue different revenue projections, so we need to consider what will people actually support. And then consider whether the recommendations comply with the tax cap. <clears> Town <throat> budget, we'll talk about, we'll compare. The last, the approved 2019 budget was 6757953 The proposed budget for the coming year was $7,187,328 which represented an increase of almost $430,000. The budget committee went through the process, asked the questions, got feedback, and made recommendations for reductions of $122,401. The proposed, so bringing the proposed 2020 budget to $7,064,927. The budget committee proposed, our proposed budget is $29,000 
53rd pay period. So that means rather than the Brett standard 52 checks we're cutting, we have to cut 53rd. And so that, that's a sizable impact that we can't control. So hopefully it'll be a few years before we get done again. But the way the calendar works, an extra pay period. Salary increases are included that are associated with previously approved police contract. We hired a police officer, which again helps us with the overtime. And then there are other phases. If you look at the budget, good job guys. We have made some anticipated completion of degrees by our officers. So one of the benefits they receive in their contract is that there is a, a um, no, award, a, is a fund that, fee, that they receive as a result of that. And it also begins a three year effort to replace portable communications radios, which are apparently not as successful as the one we hope. So that, all those items pushed for a $97,000 increase in that proposal. Ah, there we go. The fire department so, uh, proposed an increase of a little over $15,000. And again, it's related, a good portion of it is the additional pay period. There are also additional items at the new fire station that need to be maintained and inspected. Items that we didn't have at the old fire station that we now have because so one of the things we're going to be seeing in the next couple of years is what is it actually costing to maintain that building. We had a lot of guesses and estimates and projections, but now we're starting to find to actually see the real cost. So there's not too much of a historical spend there that we can draw down on, so we will be developing that as we go through it. Fire hydrants, this is a, there will actually be a decrease of a little over $19,000. As everybody who's on kind of check knows, that nice little surcharge on your bill for the rate recovery. That's coming to an end, <coughs> so we'll be again at some point in the future. But this one, for now, is coming to an end on hydrants, so we'll see the benefit of that. Road maintenance. There was a proposed increase of a little over $170,000. So this is associated with new position, part of it is associated with new highway positions. Um, there was a warrant article last year where we had it we authorized or the addition of one person. Then there was a recommendation to add a second. And then there was also in a 50 30 pay period. There's a new contract for removing snow at the town hall, police station, and fire station. That helps you free up some of the file drivers to actually address the town itself. But it also would be cost to the budget to do that contract. And then we also have additional highway block grant improvements. So this is a tricky one because offset by revenue, but because we are going to spend it, it actually shows the spend side too. So those are what are driving the road maintenance increases. Sanitation administration, $21,470 increase. Again, in that 53rd pay period. As well as an increase in the cost and quantity of solid waste disposal. And those are driven by actual numbers and effects of great jobs that we came in those records. So, we saw lots of increases and we thought that was a concern. So we took a look through it, we asked a lot of questions, and there were a number of reductions that were recommended. So we had some small smaller items, the board select and income, we accounted $250 per account. Information technology, we had to a reduction of $25,000. That was associated with some of those infrastructure upgrades in the hopes that we'll find alternative ways of doing that or including it in that long-term plan that we'll keep pushing for um, or end-of-year funds. But for now, it's not just, we're not reaching the taxes on that right now. Legal expenses is one big one, $15,000 decrease. Um, and we have that one's to bring the numbers more in line with historical spend. There's a lot of unknowns there because of the ways and other items, but it seems like a reduction of $50,000 made sense for what we've been spending. Uh, the personnel administration will tie into reduction of road maintenance. So, as I mentioned earlier, the increase in road maintenance included the additional employees. We debated this pretty thoroughly at the budget meeting, and we strongly felt that 
this position because it's a new position ought to be included as a warm article. Uh, so the road maintenance a reduction of 38, almost $39,000 includes also the benefits elsewhere in the budget. So it was a sizable reduction overall, but, the, but we'll see those costs as a warm article when we get to those. Vendor payments we'll talk about that there's a warrant article that will come up later that involves about creating a fund for vendor payments, which is also the welfare assistance. Because the way our budget has worked in the past is every year we raise a good chunk of money, which is great because we, want, we have an obligation to help people who have, have needs. But we don't always know how much those needs are going to be. And a lot of times we find ourselves significantly under overfunding that line item. And what happens to that unspent money is it gets rolled into the general fund. And then some of us get a little aggravated with that because it's, it's just money that's getting raised and then it's spent for the general fund. So the idea was if we created a fund, and we'll get there later, um, for the vendor payments, we could raise that money once and spend it as it's needed rather than raise it every year and not necessarily spend it. So that is pulled out of the budget and the whole expectation is that the, the board will support the other one. And then conservation commission, this is a this, this is a tough decision and a tough call. And we appreciate them coming in to, to really uh, lobby for their their expenses, but this is in for equipment to maintain their their um, their work. And but we, there was a foreign article several years ago that encouraged them to use their existing funds that was intended for maintenance. So the expectation was, while well, those items are well needed and cut and do great things for their group, but there's an alternative funding source available and we were encouraging them to use that first. So putting those all together, we ended up with a sizable debt reduction of a little over $122,000. So before we move on, are there any questions related to our
The estimated tax rate impact for 2020 is $0, but the, the warrant article also indicates what the future impact is estimated to be, but obviously it's subject to, to evaluation changes and whatnot. But this is, based on today's dollars and today's valuation, this is what we can expect to pay. Okay, why don't you share a thought or some comments that are shared by the executive director right regarding the need for this Right, so there are, yes, there is a concern that the existing <coughs> town is significantly outdated and to the point where it cannot be maintained appropriately. If something breaks, we're in trouble, is, is how it was expressed to this budget committee. And so the thought is now <coughs> that we have the upgrade, we have a lot of towers that need some work, an opportunity to bring all various departments onto the same system as opposed to multiple systems that are pulled together. Um, so there are, this is a public safety concern because if our, if our radios go down, <coughs> our town employees are in a difficult time uh, communicating with one another. Just a, a question. Sure. Yeah, zero this hey, no. round no. ball. No. <laughs> Six years in Okay. Yeah, no, no tax impact this year, but in the future years, will this impact the tax cap. I it will because it's increased and in authorized spending now, it is treated as a contract, right? It becomes part of the new base. So one of the concerns one that yes, it is one of the it was one of the factors that was discussed. We have a hundred and fifty one thousand dollar annual payment over five years. We have a tax cap of hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. So it required some we could the option, one option is to put it for what it had been to authorize it starting this year, and then the budget committee could not support it. And it would be obviously incumbent upon everybody to advocate for it because it's a desperate need in town. But it also, with the tax cap, we ran into some logistical issues. So it's, it, this was the way in which the board of selectmen decided they wanted to, to finance it. And our responsibility as a budget committee is to decide whether that was is a responsible method, whether or not it's the preferred method. I mean, it's not our, our purview. It is whether or not it's responsible to move forward in this manner. Are there any other questions relative to Article 6? All right, hearing none, Article 7. Library earned time approval expendable trust fund. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,000 to be placed in the library earned time accrual expendable trust fund as previously established. The estimated tax rate for that is one cent. It has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 500, and recommended by the Budget Committee, 810. Are there any questions relative to this warrant article? The main thing, this is. Uh, this is to help offset expenses associated with earned time. Rather than get hit with a large sum at the end, we're set by setting money aside every year. There is a pool of funds that is responsible, responsibly available. Any questions? All right, very good. Moving on. This is the Article 8, Human Services and Health Agencies. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $15,000 to support human services and health agencies providing services to the town of Litchfield. If approved, the Health and Human Services Funding Committee will review funding requests and submit recommended funding amounts to the Board of Selectmen for approval. The estimated tax for 2020 tax rate, in fact, is two cents. It has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 500 and recommended by the budget committee by a vote of 810. All right. This is, uh, I believe, a reduction of last year. Last year's warrant article was $25,000, and this year the request is for $15,000. Any questions? All right. Hearing none. Article 9, <coughs> General Assistance Expendable Trust Fund. To see if the town will go to establish a general assistance expendable trust fund pursuant to RSA 3119-A for the purpose of providing financial assistance to individuals in need pursuant to RSA 165-1 one, 
and to raise and appropriate $10,000 for said fund. Further to name the Board of Selectmen and agents to expend from said fund. Estimated 2020 tax rate impact is one cent. It's been recommended by the Board of Selectmen 500 and recommended by the Budget Committee 810. So this ties back to the, the vendor payments item that was removed from the base budget. Uh, rather, again, rather than appropriate a sum of money every year and not knowing what we're going to spend out of it, the thought, the consensus was that a trust fund would be a good opportunity to raise the money once and use it as needed. Replenishing it when we get low, but this way, we raise it once as needed and then we're good, hopefully good for a little while. But any questions relative to this one? All right, hearing none. Article 10, thereupon treatment. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 for milk foil, other invasive aquatic plant species, and other treatments at Dara Pond. This will be a non lapsing appropriation and will continue until treatment is complete or until December 31st, 2024. The estimated 2020 tax rate impact is three cents. It's recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 500 and recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 540. Any questions relative to this item? All right, here you are. Article 11, Old Town Hall Paint. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to repaint the exterior of the Old Town Hall. The sum is to come from the unassigned fund balance and no amount to be raised from taxation. Estimated 2020 tax rate impact, zero cents. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 500, and recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 630. Any questions relative to this item? All right, hearing none. Article 12, plow truck purchase. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 to purchase a plow truck with equipment for the highway department. This sum to come from the unassigned fund balance and no amount to be raised from taxation. Estimated 2020 tax rate impact, zero cents. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 500. Recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 720. Any discussion relative to this one? Article 13, Building Systems Trust Fund. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be placed in the Building Systems Trust Fund as previously established. This sum to come from an unassigned fund balance and no amount to be raised from taxation. The estimated 2020 rate impact is zero cents. It was recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 500. <coughs> I'm recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 9-0-0. So this is to, really, we tapped into this one, right, for one of the, did we, did we use some of the money this past year? The HVAC at Town Hall. Right, the HVAC at Town Hall, and so this is an opportunity to replenish the funds so that the next time we have a problem, we can, we not, we'll have the funds available. So this is not necessarily to grow the fund, but more so to replenish the fund. Any questions on this one? <coughs> All right. Article 14, Technology and Communication Expendable Trust Fund. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be placed in the Technology and Communication Expendable Trust Fund as previously established. This sum to come from the unassigned fund balance and no amount to be raised for taxation. The estimated 2020 tax rate impact is zero cents. It's been recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 500 and recommended by the Budget Committee by a vote of 900. And so this one also is an opportunity to replenish a fund as opposed to grow it. The IT department faced the replacement of a switch with a storage array, another pricey piece of equipment. So it's an opportunity to replenish versus grow. Any questions relative to this item? All right, hearing none, Article 15. This is a non-binding vote 
uh, regarding community-centered design. So we are, we are not responsible, for, well, we're not responsible, we can talk about it, but we are not going to be voting on it as a budget committee as there's no funds assigned to this. Are you in favor of the Rec Commission investigating the need to construct a community center, investigating the cost of such a center, and developing drawings and design for such a center? It's been recommended by the Board of Selectmen, and again, the Budget Committee will not be voting on this as there is no cost in tax. <coughs> Article 16 is by petition. Uh, per RSA 72 colon 39-1 and RSA 72 colon 270-A, we, the people of Litchfield, New Hampshire, would like to modify the elderly exemptions to the following. Uh, the elderly exemption is based on the assessed value of their home for qualified property owners 65 years of age and up to 75 shall be $85,000. And 75 years of age to 80 shall be $140,000. Age 80 up to and up shall be $190,000. And the income of a single person to $45,000. The married couples to $55,000. To qualify, the person must have been a New Hampshire resident for at least three consecutive years, own the real estate individually or jointly, or if the real estate is owned by such a person's spouse, they must have been married to each other for at least five consecutive years. In addition, the single taxpayer must not have a net income of more than $45,000, or if married, a combined net income of $55,000, and own net access not in excess of $300,000, excluding the value of the person's residence. Or, if married, the combined assets shall not be in excess of $300,000. The combined net asset amount for married persons shall apply to the surviving spouse until the sale or transfer of the property by the surviving spouse or until remarriage of the surviving spouse. I'll work there. It's been recommended by the Board of Selectmen by a vote of 5-0-0. The budget committee has not yet discussed this one as Wrong button. This way. So for me, it was difficult to read all those numbers without knowing what I was looking at. So this is the current the current ones, and then the proposed change by the Warren article. Uh, it's difficult to quantify the exact amount that this is going to be impacted since there's a lot of factors in play. But in talking with the people in the know, the administrator, there was a suggestion that the tax impact could be about three cents. That's what that one is. Are there any questions relative to this one? All right, hearing none. And this one, I have. It's not clear to me whether or not the estimated tax rate impact will be put on this warrant, petition warrant article, but it's there for now. It can be removed. So this article 17 is by petition to see if the town will vote to increase the veterans tax credit and the all veterans tax credit from $300 to $750 per year. Uh, this was just recently like, finalized within the past couple of hours as to whether or not the, the signatures were sufficient. So we were still hammering this one out. So there have been no votes by the Board of Selectmen or the Budget Committee relative to this one. But similar to the previous one, I think it's interesting to be able to at least see the impact. It's saying, <coughs> it's something, so whether or not this impacts the tax cap is something that's currently under discussion, because if it does impact the tax cap, we have to revote, potentially have to reconsider our, our budget recommendations because we have, but if it doesn't, then whether or not, we're still hammering out the details associated with this one, but there's a, it's a petition warrant article, and we're working forward through it. But I do expect that the question itself will be on the ballot. Are there any questions relative to this one? All right, so the tax cap calculation. It's a little small here to read, but one of the things to highlight is that we did come in under the tax cap. So after all the recommendations and considerations, we squeaked under it, but we did it. Um, so items that are factored into the tax cap would be the operating budget on Article 4. Oh, the, uh, the highway employee communication system, 
which is zero this year, but would impact next year. Article 7 for the earned time, health and human and health services, general assistance, and zero time treatment. A number of the other items are coming are proposed to come out of the unassigned fund balance, and so they do not impact the town account. So that's where we stand. <coughs> Excuse me, can that be blown up? I don't know. You can give it a shot.
consider the year-to-day actual spending of the current budget, considered historical trends, and considered what was a reasonable budget to present to the voters, given that there are going to be fixed increases and revenue projections tend to change on an annual basis. All right. So the approved school district budget for this year is $22,041,958. That's starting where we are right this current year. The initial school budget request for FY 2021, which is the one we'll be for next year, was $22,772,289. Now those who are following along, there were some items that were changed because we met with the school earlier today. So hash out some numbers there. So approving the budget as presented, when we got it after the health insurance reduction was accounted for, would have been an estimated tax increase of 75 cents. So we received a budget that included a projection for our health insurance increase, but realistically, that was
accordance with RSA 40 colon 13 X or 10 and 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. So the estimated tax impact for the operating budget is 27 cents. The estimated tax impact for the default budget would be 44 cents. So it's so I believe the school board just voted on this or no? We did not vote. They have not yet voted on the recommendation. So there's zero, 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 and the budget committee will take this up after the meeting. Do you want me to go into my spiel as to what we will do to get to this number, or do you want to ask just a question? Just a quick question. Sure. Of all the, the school district is going to get about 670000 of one-time money. Is any of that money in this budget? I don't believe so. Not the proposed spending. But the, uh, I believe that they, they're part of the capital planning committee. Is that where, where my school people, that's where they're. The one time only this year, and mm -hmm. don't want to lose it. No,
committee decided to remove the kindergarten, the fifth kindergarten teacher and para for a $103,000 reduction. The budget committee encouraged the school board to present the funding of these positions as a warrant article. At least we're right this time. Textbooks with a reduction of $7,435. And it, the, these were costs associated, associated with outfitting the fifth kindergarten class, and it was suggested that they be included. Uh, furniture and equipment, 18867 reduction, similar thought process. They went with that additional classroom. The thought, the belief was that all the costs should be put together. Uh, obviously, we can only have that discussion on our end. The ultimate decision was in the hands of the school board. Next, I have conferences and travel. There was a reduction of 15826 There was an additional reduction of $20,000 that was recommended. There were subsequent discussions that resulted in the restoration of $4,174 to support additional training. Transportation has saw an initial reduction of $30,000. Oh, but again, subsequent discussions uh, resulted in the restoration of $9,224 in order to support the transportation for vocational programs. Supplies saw an initial re uh, reduction of $20,056. That also included costs associated with that fifth kindergarten classroom, but we discussed it and <coughs> additional information presented that resulted in the restoration of $10,000. So the net reduction to supplies is a little over $10,000. And then miscellaneous items to bring up historical spending. Snow plow, a reduction of a little over $2,000. Printing and binding, a $200 reduction. Extended year program, $200 reduction. Legal services, a $3,000 reduction. And game officials, a $5,000 reduction. So bring it all total. So there were a number of possible reductions, but there were lots of discussions and we got well, to see a victim fund that came up. So that brings I'll show the article one again. So if anybody has any questions they'd like to discuss, now give the opportunity to start the ball rolling.
I may, could you, uh, you might tell you the superintendent, can you go to the second slide after the, yeah, just on this one. Uh, so first of all, I just want everybody who's watching this at home to understand that we met for a couple of hours today. We were late in getting some of the numbers to carry, so uh, that's school district responsibility. Um, however, this slide does have a lot of erroneous figures in it. I think it's really important that we understand that. Um, because if you look at the increase that's there, the 966, it doesn't tie back to the 730 that was on a previous page. This really comes from the incomplete work product that Andrew started with, that there were significant changes made to. And then we're, we're casting these numbers as if those are all the final numbers, but really nothing on this ties back to the actual presented budget. And so um, just be careful with this page in particular because it's showing reductions that didn't occur at that amount. Um, and there just wasn't the time to get this one right. And I didn't want to delete it because it was your PowerPoint, right? So it's like, here it is. But please do not rely on this because the numbers up there simply don't tie back to the budget that was finally presented to the budget committee. Um, so I just want to make that clear to everybody here. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, we have a couple weeks until deliveries. We can clean it up. But uh, you know, I'm really I started with, so did my best efforts. Or... Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who put in lots of time to get this far in the process. Um, could you speak a little bit about the um, transportation cut? It, it initially, there was showing an increase in transportation expenses, and then the budget committee cut 20000 from that. How does that work? But how, what was the rationale? How do you see $20,000 coming out of the transportation? So there was a significant increase in the transportation budget. We saw an increase of about 16000 Part of this, a lot of that is associated with um, extracurriculars and sporting activities. So there's a long discussion of how much to fund. Do we fund every every team going to states? Is that a realistic expectation? Is it? I just, what is a good number? So I believe we tied into. No, that was for Go Tech because they there was a there was a presentation that said how they felt it would be spread out across. There was a lot, there was three year historical trends and one of the considerations was we shouldn't add in the sport. Um, so that was considered when we restored the money. So it, a lot of it is historical trends and how much is reasonable to expect to fund. Yeah, if, if I may, can you hear me on this mic? Yeah. I this one's on. Yeah, they're giving me the thumbs up. So okay. if I may, right, the transportation budget was inflated, but it was inflated because of new activities, new sports, right? Obviously, in transportation, we have our annual run for the buses, right? Which is contractual, that wasn't touched, right? That's fixed, we understand that. But there was some fluctuation in other areas, bed transportation, special education transportation, athletic transportation, et cetera, right? Special education transportation, we also didn't touch, right? Because we understand the district needs associated to that program, right? But athletics was an area we felt was really inflated in terms of what we're budgeting for, uh, and in terms of the actual services that we provide. So the original motion, it was passed by this committee, was actually a $30,000 reduction, right? Um, Member Harrison came back to the budget committee about a week or so ago and said, you know what, we talked with the school board and we really feel that was too deep. We listened to those concerns, there was a motion made to restore $9,224 to that line, and this committee accepted that. And that was, that was so then that discussion was about the vocational busing to Allen. Um, yep. Those programs we can't provide or don't provide. Mm -hmm. right. And so the budget committee is suggesting uh, cutting transportation for athletic teams. Is that the summary? It's, it's a bottom line. So, so whether right, but you're suggesting that's where that twenty thousand dollars. It cut could be the from. result of combining groups. A lot of times in the past, we've but we can't. Com no, we can't, we're already contractually <coughs> tied into our no. Athletics is the area that's highly inflated. That would be my recommendation as an area of focus where the school board or the SIU then decides to apply that reduction? Well, it can't be applied, if I just say it correctly, it can't be applied in regular student going to and from school, because that's already tied into it's a contract with the right? Correct. So you're talking about, when you say extracurricular, you're essentially meaning uh, athletics and there's sports, that, there's the clubs are our only options, right? No, no, there's also opportunity to achieve savings through, when, and traditionally when we fund special education, it's assumed that each child has a run, their own Sometimes we can combine them. Sometimes we can piggyback on other schools. So there's an opportunity to achieve savings in those departments. And we have traditionally achieved savings. We just did not take them under special education this year. We did a bottom line transportation. Any other questions? 
Proposed operating budget um, were to pass. You have uh, the budget committee has proposed eliminating from that budget the, um, the kindergarten teacher. Mm -hmm. And so, if that is removed from the operating budget, and it's not on a separate order article that passes, um, if we get a sudden enrollment, unexpected enrollment of kindergarten, this could with this unsigned these unsigned funds could roll over to to have a fifth kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Correct? But it can only be done on July 1st, but if our sudden enrollment increases in August or September. So the funds become available. The funds okay. will be created. So it's it relies on August. end of year balances. So the school financial year closes July 30th. Mm -hmm. And then they will tell us how much is left over. And since there's already money in the budget for this position, and with the expectation that if they did not spend it, it would, if we did not need this position, it would not be spent. So that money will be available from July 1st, but they can't move it over until the new, the new year, fiscal year starts. And, and just to point out, the school board took the money out of the budget prior to this. Oh, okay. So this was our recommendation for the warrant. Oh, okay. okay. We, we've already, the money's already been taxed for the position. Yeah. Sorry, the money's already been taxed for this position for this year. We'll take the money as an assigned fund balance and transfer it into this. But it is very important to pass it because the money has not been budgeted 
if this warrant was to fail, the money's not in the budget for next year. That's what you're on teacher list. Right. That would put some time to that. Right. That was the concern to the board having to do it. And one of the nice things about being created in this way, if you don't hit the trigger point this year, hey, next year, or three years, the money's there for whenever that emergency is if, if, it if it passes. If it passes, we don't know when that number is going to be hit. So it's set aside for when that inevitability occurs to be there. But rather than raise that money by taxes <coughs> every year, saying that next year is going to be the year, this all set it aside for when that year actually comes. Which is why it's important for people who are going to do kindergarten to register so that you can get your head count. Are there any other questions relative to this article? All right, hearing none. Article 4. Shall the Litchfield School District vote to raise and appropriate up to $50,000 to be added to the Special Education Capital Reserve Fund established in 2004 and authorize the use of that amount from the June 30th unassigned fund balance available for transfer on July 1st of this year with no amount to be raised from taxation. The estimated tax impact is zero dollars, and it's been recommended by the school board five zero zero, and will be voted on by the budget committee following this meeting. And similar to the town to pay replenishment and not a growth in the fund. There, there were, they were, they needed to tap into this fund this year for some unexpected expenses, and so it's restoring the fund so that the next time we should find ourselves in a situation where we are still able to address those. Are there any questions relative to this item? All right, hearing none, Article 5. Shall the Litchfield School District vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $70,000 to be added to the operating budget for the purpose of funding a pre-construction feasibility study or planning to determine the possibility and cost of new construction and or renovation of existing facilities in Litchfield School District as recommended by the Capital Planning Committee. Estimated tax impact is eight cents. Been recommended by the school board five zero zero, and this budget committee will vote on this after this meeting. Are there additional information? Any questions that anybody may have relative to this? <laughs> All right. Hearing none. Article six. Shall the school district vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $35,000 to purchase and install door parakeet security devices for all interior classrooms and office doors at Griffin Memorial School, Litchfield Middle School, and Campbell High School. These door security devices are necessary to prevent an intruder from gaining access to the doorknob, lever, or lock on a classroom and office doors in the school building. The estimated tax impact is four cents. It's been recommended by the school board by vote of 5-0-0, and it's currently pending the recommendation of the budget committee who will vote on this after this hearing. Are there any other are there any questions or comments relative to this one? Ms. Hartle. Yes, Article 7. Shall the Litchfield School District vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to recore cylinders and keys, all door locks at Litchfield Middle School. This is based on security and safety recommendations from the building security assessment performed by the New Hampshire Department of Homeland Security. The estimated tax impact is three cents. It's currently pending the recommendation of the school board and also the budget committee. Are there any questions or comments relative to this item? All right. What does this all mean? Current budget proposal would add an additional 27 cents if passed. This would be an estimated increase of $94 on a house valued at $350,000 should it pass. The default budget proposes to add 44 cents. That would be an estimated $154 increase on a house valued at $350,000 if the proposed budget fails. Alright. Adding that all together, these are the items that have been proposed. Should all of the warrant articles pass, the warrant articles would add an additional 22 cents. So combined with the operating budget and the warrant articles would be an additional 50 cents, bringing, which would result in an estimated tax impact of $175 for a house value of $350,000 if all articles and the operating budget are passed by the voters. Are there any questions or comments? All right, I hear none. So, 
budget hearing, school board budget hearing, and we will reconvene for the, we will meet after this to make board our recommendations, but we will also 